we are back and are gonna just jump right into us uh or it jumping into the booth with us is neozar uh, neozar is the current world record uh pause streak holder at 100 the streak is still alive uh what's up neozar how you doing Hey everyone, it's great to be here. You know, this has been just an awesome event so far. Really, really excited to be on it. Excellent. Well, welcome, yeah. welcome. Our last match ended uh, very close. Uh, Billy Kirby jumping out and taking an early lead in this matchup. So a one to zero lead to Billy at the current time. And we're going to be moving directly forward into the picks and bans phase. Uh, my pick will be the Mantis A. What you got for us, Farb? Stealth C. Because it's go time, baby. Got a Mantis A and a Stealth C onto the board. And Neo's are. What's going to be your pick here? I'm putting Slug B back up there. Slug G. Some, <laughs> uh, some interesting ships available here. As Billy has won the first match, it is your pick whether you want to ban first or second. I'll ban second. All right. Necro. What would you like to ban out? I still don't really want to do that slug B. All right, slug B <laughs> off of the table. We are not going to see the slug G. Seems like everyone's feeling pretty similarly about not playing that ship. <laughs> Billy, your bam. What would you like to to play? I'm going to ban the Mantis A. Let's play the Stealth Let's C. Go. Yeah, Let's see. go. Let's oh. <laughs> go. Uh, we were talking in the the pre-roll before we got going here. I think all of all of us casters were in agreement that Stealth C was what we were hoping to see. So very excited for the run. Uh, any comments from you, Billy, before we get going? Uh, I'm just hoping we don't run into too many asteroid fields. <laughs> <laughs> Necro, any thoughts? I actually kind of like this ship. I think it's underrated. I I agree. I mean, I think we all kind of like it a little bit, you know? It's, like, bad, but it's, like, kind of great. It's bad, but it's cute, you know? Yeah. It's fun bad. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. They can't, they can't see the shit. I don't Look think it's as bad as people think. Look at the camo. It's, they can't see it. It's easy. Exactly. Why are there just rooms? I'm going to go ahead and drop a seed into <laughs> here for our contestants. And for those that want to play at home, the seed will be 815 three one eight three four nice and with that looks like both of our contestants are ready to go so let's go ahead and jump into it neozar do you want to give us the countdown all right you ready for it let's do, let's it. do it three two one go all right stealth c so neozar give us Give us your breakdown of this ship. What are you looking for, Sector 1? What are you worried about? What's our first objectives? Well, so, you know, hazards are, you know, you got to stay away from hazards. That's the big thing. You have the scanners, at least. And you've got great weapons. So often I go for the weapons buffer. And because it's like, that's what's going to keep you alive. You know, you might take damage, but you got to keep shooting them. Otherwise, you know, that's it. <laughs> and after that, you kind of, you got to get shields or something. I mean, <laughs> it's just kind of obvious. You got to stay alive somehow. Stealth C definitely gives a good variety of what you can do first. Uh, besides the weapons buffer, in my opinion. Weapons buffer should always be first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. From there, it's like you can build into offense. You know, if you find good drones or you can keep the drones you have, you can sell stuff off if there's a good store. Um, right. There's a lot of choices. I think that's why a lot of high-level players like it, because there's like a lot of strategic options you can take. Mm -hmm. That's... I think that's a fair assessment of it. Yeah. You'd like some of the other bad ships like Stealth B or just kind of like, what are your choices most of the time? You don't really have many right. choices. It's just, you know, you're forced into one kind of thing. Your choice is to aim the glaive beam and hope it fires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stealth B isn't exactly a decision-making powerhouse. It's, uh, Ooh, you kind of nice. know what you're oh, getting into. That's, that's awesome. You got a free weapon already. I mean, yep, you just, free you know, charge, Lizzie. pump your offense. That's your strongest thing already. Um, I, a lot of times an R will skip the weapons buffer to try to get shields up quicker. Um, so that is one difference. Nice. Billy's got the laser charger too there. So that's good. Yep. They're definitely on the same route here. I just yeah. realized too, they both took the, the upper part of the sector and there's no really in between. Mm-hmm. 
both seeing the store early, kind of jumping around it, deciding if they actually want to go to it or not. With the current scrap totals, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe not. Billy, I actually opted to not get the uh, weapons buffer right away either. Yeah, I think seeing that store, it's like you just want to save up as much as you can before going there and play a little riskier, maybe. Yeah, I'm on the other side of the fence on that one still. Um, especially after getting that free charge laser, man. You're, what, 35? If you put the 25 scrap in, you're 35 scrap away from having four projectiles and a mini beam in sector two. You could also right. fire one shot from both of them in like six exact, seconds. Exactly, <laughs> man. So it's like, you know, even not considering speed for the tournament, I think I make that play. But I always get the weapons buffer anyway, so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to grab the weapon power immediately. I see NR there already has the weapon buffer up now. So do you go for another point in there? Get that other charge laser online? I think you do. Just got a shout out chat here. Rand's on a on a hype train right now. And we got five gifted subs from two different people. And then Plunder Pig has been popping off. I think he dropped 30 subs. The two five sub gifters here were Mr. Shogi and Ren. Uh, I'll speak for Rand here and just say thank you so much. Thank you for your support, chat. Uh, this tournament wouldn't be possible without you being here to watch with us. And, Absolutely. Uh, we're very excited to see where this sort of format goes, what the future might hold. There was some conversation about that even just on the break there of what's next as we all continue to enjoy this wonderful event. So Anar did end up picking the weapons buffer, and he was actually in a asteroid field, which he got out of just fine. Nice. Yep. So Anar is actually on the same page with me here. So. Yep. Straight to getting that other charge laser online. Let's get a bigger volley going. It's just too Billy good. Kirby's right? struggling here because he didn't get the the weapons buffer. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yep. Weapons are down. Shot into piloting. Scary. Oof, it's getting spooky. I don't. I don't think he dies here. I, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think he does. Yeah, he's got the venting of the weapons done, so he needs to get some oxygen back in there. Focus... He's on... Yep, Go ahead. sorry. No. Uh, focusing on getting the clone bay back up there because of the low health human, didn't want to lose a crew, and looks like he's going to go ahead and just bail from the fight, potentially. Yep. Yeah, he's got Great the right there, nice safe spot. Yeah. Yep. Seeing hacking. Do you hmm. sell to get onto hacking here? It's tempting. I'm a real hacking. Yeah. Hacking isn't shields, but you weapons hack here. And mm -hmm. it provides a lot of safety. Yeah, absolutely. But it's hard to give. You'd have to give up the charge laser or the shield drone to make it happen. I'm pretty sure. It's also, always hard to give up hacking. Mm -hmm. is, especially on a ship like this. Yeah, kind of interesting Necro going ahead and selling off the second charge laser and replacing it with the burst laser one. Hmm, I didn't pick that up. Yeah, I, see it, I, guess. I, I think it was a sell and buy. I don't think it was a free weapon. I could be wrong about that. But, uh, Did you happen to see it, Nidazar? No, I missed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested if he bought that or not, because I'm not sure I, I would buy it, but I'd use it over that. Or there. Yeah. I Just, certainly prefer burst one, but I don't know that I would buy it to replace a charge laser in this in this case. Yeah, not this early on without shields and stuff. Like you gotta hold I don't to that scrap. I don't think he bought it looking at the route. There was the fleet, uh, the fleet hadn't caught up enough, um, so you could still see all the jumps he took, and you, you, I didn't see a store on the map. Yeah. At all. So Billy's back at the store with hacking. Yeah, seems to be making the play to get yeah. towards something. Yeah, he's thinking about selling it off too. Let's oh, see. Yeah. Oh, he's going for shields. Okay. Shield, all, right. Yeah. all right. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a that's a play. It is a play. A little bit more safety, and now a charge laser and a mini beam is looking a lot better with a <laughs> shield to give you yeah. a little protection. Yep. And a second shield potentially coming in for much cheaper than that first shield purchase. So. You know what also helps with uh, this burst two mini beam fight? Being yes. able to shoot two charge lasers off in six seconds. Yeah, true. <laughs> it takes them down immediately, yeah. 
extremely true. Yeah, I'm a little surprised how differently he's playing. Because last run, he went all aggressive and was like delaying shields a ton and bought like five weapon power. And now he's playing it the other way. If I had a guess, it's probably because of Stealthy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Get a little spooked by it for sure. And that shield means that when you find an asteroid field, you don't have to panic nearly as much. Okay, there's so a was laser. Free, there's a free burst laser, yeah. That makes gotcha. sense. And so now that play is, is putting out, out good regains for him. Right? Yeah. Filthy like... luck sack, Billy. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this streamer is so lucky. Yeah. I cannot believe this RNG. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> So we're already setting up for another really interesting contest here. Once again, we see Necro jumping out to an early lead, but uh, much like we saw in the last game, I actually like the position that Billy's in just a little bit better with the shielding, the weapon system probably coming online in the near future. Um, I, I like the, the long-term chances for Billy. I think he's gonna be able to start doing exactly what happened last run, start farming a little bit earlier. Uh, be getting out of fights a little bit faster potentially. So definitely not currently. Position. Wow. There, there's been a lot of scrap there selling all those drone parts because he knows okay. he doesn't need them for defense. Right into weapons. I like it. Yep. Yeah. Speaking okay. of aggression. Yeah. It's working out for him really good there. Yeah. Kind of interesting too to see the more defensive play go directly into such an offensive play. It's like, okay, definitely lends some credence to the idea that it was a stealth C decision to grab the shields but as soon as that was in place it was right back to you. how aggressive can I be yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean just having no shields you know one fight can just end you if you find a bad hazard that's just it right an yep. tail is not nice and will force you into it mm-hmm mm -hmm. so we're cruising along here necro yep. coming to the end of sector two just a few jumps ahead so far. Yep. Put the rock on comms. Got to do it. Cave dwelling yeah. pebble man. I paint my ship with you. Yep. I really appreciate that FTL has those sorts of flavor-based options where it doesn't do anything really, but like on the other hand, it does so much. Right. <laughs> it's a nice balance of you know it's kind of minimal in a lot of ways, but it has just enough of those like little extra mm -hmm. things in it. You know. Let's be real. FTL is just a great game all around. Yeah. I mean, that's no secret to any of us here. You know, I'm preaching to the choir, but it's so good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Timeless in so many ways. And, uh, you know, again, with the viewership for a tournament for a game nine years old, who would have thunk that FTL would have come <laughs> to this point from where it started? It's true. Mind blowing. Uh, so we've got a combat drone picked up over on Necro's side. Nice. Could be useful. He's gonna sell it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, There's there we go. He wants to buy. Yep. Oh, he had There's to sell it. Definitely, definitely shields, shields. Yeah. Yep. Mm. But now we see the That's... run stabilizing on both sides. That's what you do in that store there. I'm glad it was good enough seed that they could keep it going this time, not just restart it right away. <laughs> uh, I think I think Necro kind of nailed it. I do think that it's underrated. Um, but by saying that, I don't think that means it's good. I think it's just underrated about... No, let me let me rephrase that. I think it's overrated on how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I well, mean, I think it's, so. a, it's got a really high... Uh, like, the skill floor is really high, I think, to oh, fight initially. And so everyone, when they're learning the game, it's just like, what is this ship? How does anyone win with it? Mm -hmm. Well, and it feels bad when you jump into an asteroid field sector one and just die, right? Yep. Which is always going to yep. affect people's views of a ship. Same thing with Mantis B, right? As we saw, sometimes you get a breach in your oxygen and you're just dead. Yeah. People turn a blind eye to Mantis B, though. It's so strange. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's also just everyone has like their personal experiences because you'll find players who have like really strange views on ships sometimes just because they've had really good or bad luck with it. You know. Well, those those people are wrong. Cabo. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first from yeah. the perfect player himself, yep. the underscore farm. I'm just ruthless. Ruthless. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with Farb there. They are wrong, but you know, <laughs> you can understand why they're wrong. Kappa. 
Kappa. So I asked uh, this question of Hollow uh, the other day, and I wanted to ask it of you, Neozar. What do you think is the thing that sets you apart that's allowed you to get this world record streak with Paws that's different from what any of the other Paws players are doing? Do you think there's one particular thing? Are you using some technique? Is it just straight up decision making? Or has it been a little bit of luck or all of the above? Um, I mean, you know, I can I can pin it on a couple different things, I'm sure, depending how how much I want to give myself credit for it. But oh, you know do it. Just do but it. But for the most part, you know, it's like I'm doing the same <laughs> stuff everyone else is doing. It's the same kind of techniques. But I think I've had a really good mindset going through it because it, it's just it's a lot of games. It's a lot of time. And you mm-hmm. never know when FTL is gonna get you. And so it's like you just have to be vigilant over so many runs and really like think it out. Because with pause also, like you can take all the time you want. So if you get somewhere really bad, like you just have to figure out how to get through it and not till or, you know, like make a decision based off, you know, what's happened already, just like based off what you need to do to, to make it happen. So a little bit of patience, a little bit of good mentality of yeah. just accepting FTL is going to give you what FTL will give you. Yeah, totally fair. And also, a lot it's, of bit it's of easier game now to, um, so much has been figured out about the game at this point. Like doing it a couple of years ago, like it'd be so mm-hmm. much harder because just like the information about the game wasn't there. So, I mean, that's definitely an advantage. Like, I think that's why we're yep. seeing new records being set now. Yep, I, I totally agree. I think the influx of big streaks and all the good players showing up out of nowhere is definitely a part of that. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I was affected by that too coming in, right? Um, there was so much knowledge out there already that like I didn't have to figure much out. <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. like I... I saw the strats that were wor- working best and you know kind of develop my own flow from there yeah i mean that's basically what i did like i had played some you know before advanced edition even came out and little bits but very casually and then like a year ago i started watching crow play and i started playing again and i just like adapted crow. a bunch of his strats um to how i wanted to play and just you know then like learn stuff from mike hopley and i've just gone down like the pit of more and more micro over time and get two awesome really dudes to learn from yeah and so it's like over time also you know i have a hundred streak now and how i play now versus the beginning is even like pretty different like i've really slowed down a lot and done a lot more advanced strategy to like keep it going for that long Mm -hmm. that's definitely one thing that all top players do that uh kind of sets them apart is any teeny tiny little advantage that we can take we're doing it right Mm -hmm. yeah and more so on the pause side of things because on pause you can control so much so much you can do so many different things right there's some things that mike does that like i won't even watch because if i learn it by accident (laughs) like i'm gonna start doing it and i don't want to do it right there's the zoltan treadmill where he counts like frames based off how it runs back and forth across the ship that's too far for me so it's i can't watch that you know i just can't (laughs) learn it he's uh Mike is something else, man. Yeah, no, it's incredible. <laughs> but I feel like just knowing part of what helped me streak was like, wow, knowing Mike can win all these things like shieldless, like, well, if he can do it shieldless, I should be able to win, you know, with shields. Like, come on, there has to be some way to win these fights every time. Like, right. And just knowing there's an answer made me like look for it. If yeah. he can do this, then I suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out one different routing decision here. Billy's in a uh, nebula and uh, NR went to Mantis sector three. So they've diverged in routing just a little bit. Uh, NR is a full sector ahead at this point, but uh, we'll see how the different routing plays out for them. Sure. Yeah, they're both still looking for systems. You know, they only have shields. They didn't get a hacking it or anything. Billy got that free combat drone as well. Um, you know, going into the Nebula with scanners is better than not having scanners, obviously, but the Nebula can still be not very productive in terms mm-hmm. of scrap. Yeah, it's definitely, Uncharted is probably my least favorite sector. Same. You know, I'll go there every once in a while if I'm really scared of something else, but it's just low scrap. There's barely any stores. It's not a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of borders for Billy over there. Feels bad, man. Gotta hate those empty border events. Just feels terrible. No scrap. Just, Just takes up a bunch beat. of time. Yeah. yeah. All the micro to like keep your crew alive and not take extra damage. Mm-hmm. Yep. And even though Stealthy has some of the best 
venting in the game, it always feels like borders just absolutely suck on this ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's true. Like the venting's great, but they just move between the important systems like really quickly. They just want to be in your main systems. I think from how the venting is, right? That's tough. We did see on that brief uh, map brought up by Billy that there is a store in the next jump or right near to here. So see if Billy goes for that or tries to jump around it. A little bit of a bad fight for Necro going on here in the uh, asteroid field. Mm -hmm. Two shields and a combat two or a defense two drone. Yeah. Annoying. He's got the missile down though, so I think he'll be okay. Yeah, that was good. I mean, it's just the weapons, you know, it's like you'll take some damage but weapons carry you through the fight. I really yeah. like seeing the pauses out of Necro. He paused there to get the mini beam swipe in. Yeah, that's really around. smart, doing it just strategic, slow down just a little bit to, to keep it safe. Yep. In a format where pausing is allowed, now you gotta trade off some, some time for that. But in a format where the pausing is allowed, also monster ship for NR, um, I think you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by not taking advantage of the pause button because it is... We can talk about systems and weapons till we're blue mm -hmm. in the face, but the strongest thing in the game is the ability to pause. Yep. Yeah. Pause is really good. And it's not going to slow you down that much if you're just doing a couple of quick little pauses. Like, the time factor isn't exactly. that critical. We've seen that a bunch. Our score is definitely really important. Yep. Yeah, That's it's, it's kind of a good balance, like, between... I feel like it's been good for the, like, competition factor between pause and no pause players coming in here. It's, like, really hit a nice balance, I think. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Billy about to snatch up that flag here. Mm-hmm. Get an extra projectile. Feels bad to not be able to take cloaking out of the store, but yeah. He's looking for fuel too. After being in the nebula, they just always get you know you just go through all your fuel. That's very true. I uh, I like the flak pickup here. Um, even being a little bit short on scrap, just because you're progressing into sector four, you can start seeing three shields, and although it's only one more projectile, five is such a bigger difference than four yep. projectiles yeah. so. oh, free pike oh. beam for billy nice yeah. nice nice oh, i'm not sure if he's gonna i'm not sure if i would use that you know, we'll see what i don't think does. i would either yeah. right now but maybe yeah. you find yourself in a in a one-shot build that would be something yeah. that yeah, that's definitely for a one-shot build that would be nice yeah for me i would be holding on to that pike beam um unless i absolutely need to sell it for something yeah powerful. exactly sell it well, if it's so gonna like, get me cloaking exactly oh that's another weapon yeah, yeah. Or maybe hacking, you know? Yeah. It, it just is what's there. <laughs> mm hmm. Nasty <laughs> ship here. Yep. Yeah, uh, I'll take this first one, uh, first and second one here, uh, Gabo. <laughs> um, first one ish coming in is from Anonymous, uh, 3.59 scrap. Uh, message is FTL and then we got Crow getting a donation in here um, the total amount after conversion is 66.07 scrap before converting it into scrap it was 69.69 thanks Crow and nice <laughs> uh, but then I didn't read the message yet he says stun bomb is garbage you know what isn't this tournament thanks to all the people involved in making this happen first i was mad at you crow and then you saved it because this tournament has been awesome billy almost just died in that uh dive two missiles was, just slammed yeah. the piloting that was terrifying uh, i was not looking at the screen i was reading sorry yeah so no no no. didn't mean to interrupt crow thank well, you absolutely for interrupt me for that uh but <laughs> uh yeah terrifying but billy is alive with three hall so recoverable um we do have a, another donation from python as well for 5709 from python with love uh mentions that any amount helps and i will uh give that credit as well and say if you can donate to this great cause we uh are happy to read your donation at any level and thank you again to everybody who's been supporting uh the tournament as well as uh charity Good for Anar you. is forced into an abandoned Sector 5 here. Oh, that's a scary first yeah. fight, too. Yep. Yeah, no one uh, Billy's to still recovering. Well, he's got yeah, hacking bomb. going on now, at least. He does. 
I missed that. But yeah, Billy, he really needs a star. Bombers mm -hmm. are going to be scary on this ship. He's almost out of fuel, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think I take the distress here because that ship could be wanting his fuel. Yep. And that is not something you can afford to give away right now. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, you either you either got to yeah. pay him or not fire yeah. the ship. You die here. Yep. I mean, at least, you, the, at least you can it. say no to him. Yep. Right. Scouting the sector Scouting, seems yeah. like a good decision. I like that. Yeah, look at that store. Oh, no. Gotta, yeah, look oh, at him. He's man. laughing about that. It's just it's FTR good, right there. What, what's, what's Billy say? Good luck, have fun, don't die. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what's going on for Billy right now. <laughs> mm hmm. Just win, it's forehead. Like a, yeah. It's a safe fight he found here, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Necro. I think he was just clapping about. <laughs> yeah, Necro's in a pulsar here. Ooh, with shields with down. Oh, yeah. He's got the weapons under control in the enemy ship, though. And he picked up a fourth crew member too. Uh, we've got another donation coming in from Ren Thirteen for sixty-five eighty-two, uh, and Atz Farb without fees at sixty-nine forty-two. 6942 scrap closer to getting 69420. Unfortunately, <laughs> we went over that number with that donation as that was made uh, before some of the other ones or as some of the other ones came in. Thank you for that, Ren. So close. Nice try. Nice try. And thank you for the donation. I respect the hustle. Same. <laughs> well, another Zalt and Shield fight here for uh, Kirby. Yeah, just horrifying. He's got the combat drone helping out, at least. Yeah. Was not able to quite break the shields there, and that yeah. first three is starting to, yeah. to look real spicy. Trying to get it offline before it fires. Get it! Go! Oh, Hit it! Stop it! Hit it! <laughs> Do it! Just a little bit oh, more. No. oh, no! Oh, no! Oh. 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 Yeah, there it is. So close. Oh. What a bummer. Oh, oh, man. Brutal. Heartbreaking for Billy there. Man. I think that was Sector 4. Yep, I think that's the case. Sector 4. Bomber, dude. Nice try, Billy. Yeah. Just uh, one brutal fight. FTL showing its fangs once again. It is. I think I could be wrong, so correct me if I am. Um, I think since... Billy died in Sector 4, and NR is already in Sector 5. I think that's just NR defaults as the winner here. I think it's Sector... F oh, yeah, it's Sector 5 for Necro. Yep. Let's, uh, let's let Necro get through this fight and see the... Yeah, the I want to make sure... Jumps. Make sure we're we're exactly sure right about where everyone is. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty positive Billy was Sector 4. I'm pretty positive Necro's in Sector 5, but let's make sure. If that is the case, we will have a default victory going over to NR, and we will roll into our next game shortly here. So we'll get the confirmation on this jump screen right now. Sector 5, there we go. So this win will, in fact, default over to NR, and we're going to get a game three. And with how close these games have been and how these players are playing, i got to be honest, I'm excited for it. Same. I just yeah. confirmed watching the, the stream here that Billy did uh, die in Sector 4. Yep. No, this has been really tight. This has been a really close match. So should we, should we be nice in our ship picks for this? No. <laughs> not too nice, not. at least, you know good <laughs> uh sounds like we're gonna grab just a real fast break here uh, uh voice in the sky neozar are we keeping you on for another run here with this one ending a little earlier are we going to be moving guests can i get a little update from you cass neozar i'd love to have That's you good. yeah Neozar will be staying with us for a, another game here. So excited for that. We're going to go to a quick break while we get everything set up. And then uh, we'll be back here 
just a couple of minutes with Neozar, go over that last run with uh, our players, and then we'll roll forward into game three of this excellent series. Don't go anywhere. If these first two games are anything to go by, we're going to continue having exciting runs, and these casters don't plan to give it uh, easy ships over to them. So we're going to keep pushing there, pushing their boundaries and see what they can get done.